What's up everybody, Chris Mary here, back again with another video. So the Red Komodo 6K has been officially released and is available for order on red.com. This video, we're gonna be going over all the details and specs of the camera, so let's get into it. So the RED Digital Cinema Komodo 6K camera has been officially released. Finally, the black production model is now on the market and you can order it on red.com. There are also some third-party retailers selling the camera as well. For instance, Film Tools has $100 down, get you a pre-order slot for the camera. Beta Stormtrooper owners like myself have not actually been given the full details of the camera that we bought into. So it's good to see everything released and meeting the expectations that we've kind of already come up with by using the camera. So let's just do a quick rundown of what this camera is, what it's all about, and what it's offering compared to other DSMC2 cameras on the market. First things first, this camera comes in with a price point of $6,000. That's right. And now there is a way to get it even cheaper than that. If you are an original Red Hydrogen One owner, then you're able to get $1,000 off the purchase price, bringing this camera down to $5,000. That is a cheap camera in retrospect for what you're getting for the power and the sensor and RAW. Not just any RAW, R3D Red Code RAW which is, in my opinion, the easiest raw to work with. So what type of sensor's in this baby? You got a 19.9 megapixel CMOS sensor in this camera. So the 6K is gonna be operating at great potential here. For you Raven and Scarlet W owners, this is a huge jump in megapixels for your sensor. So you're gonna get a better quality image overall. And to top that off, you get a global shutter. That is just better for movement all around. And you see Red boasting that this camera has better image stabilization and people are wondering, oh, does this camera have IBIS? Is it internal stabilized? And it's like, no, that is not what they mean. That is not the case. Combining the global shutter and the 6K resolution is allowing you more room and play in post-production for you to crop in and stabilize your image to make it more smooth in post, not in camera. The effective pixels is 6144 by 3240. The dynamic range on this camera is 16 plus stops of dynamic range. That's right, it's right up there in line and competing and comparing to the DSMC2 cameras. So you're not losing any dynamic range in this little body that is much, much, much cheaper. What type of mount is on this? So you have a Canon RF mount. This camera does not support RF lenses. So therefore you are stuck with using adapted lenses, whether that be EF, PL, et cetera. Now the camera, at least the STs, did come included with a Canon RF to EF adapter. A lot of lenses are supported. So currently we have the Canon 16 to 35 Mark II L lens F 2.8 on the camera, and I have the autofocus beta mode engaged. On continuous mode, center, and I'm gonna show that that actually does contact and interact with the Canon lens. So leaning in, you can see the focus should be adapting to my face, backing up as well. So all is well in that department. So it's a shame that we don't have full RF support for those that started investing in RF lenses. But on the flip side of things, this is not a fixed EF mount, meaning that we can now adapt to PL on this camera, unlike the Raven. So that opens it up to a wider range of cinema glass. And those are the lenses that I'm most likely gonna be using. And for smaller run and gun things, I have my EF lenses that just work perfectly. But hopefully in the near future, we will get RF support for those that love that new RF glass. So our max data rates, we're getting about 280 megabits per second on a CFast 2.0 card. That's right. No more proprietary SSDs with this camera. We now have CFast and there are third party approved CFast card options. It's not just like a red standard across the board. Red used to preach modularity in the past with this DSMC2 line. Now it's kind of adaptability with this new camera. 
So you have SanDisk approved cards, you have ProGrade Digital, you have AngelBird. These are the approved manufacturers and cards that are able to be used in the Komodo 6K. Just make sure you're meeting the data rate requirements of recording Red Code Raw in 6K. Frame rates, the one thing that's got everybody down about this camera, one of the only things people really have to gripe about this camera are the frame rates. Now you may be asking right up front, why isn't there 120 at 4K? Why isn't there 120 at 6K? Now I get your gripes, I get your complaints. There are cheaper cameras that can perform this, but they can't perform in the image department as well as this camera can. I, I know what you're thinking and I know this is an ongoing debate, but R3D RAW, the IPP2 workflow, and just having the ability to manipulate the image as easy and effectively as you can with a red image puts it leagues above the rest. I'm gonna get that out of the way. Just comment if you wanna talk more about that and we could go on in a longer discussion. But you are able to get 50 frames a second here. You are able to get 120 in 2K. Now 2K coming in crop, like why would you wanna do that? I get that, totally. But it wouldn't make sense to have this camera have all those features when you have your DSMC2 cameras kind of now acting as your powerhouse, high quality and slow-mo capable cameras. So this is a way, and in sense, a way Red's backed themselves a little bit into a marketing corner, at least until DSMC3 releases, that they don't wanna fully make their other cameras obsolete, which that's not the case. A Helium and a Gemini sensor are both really good sensors and they do have their advantages over the Komodo, but it is such a close race and with the big price gap, they had to make cuts somewhere and in this department, it is the slow motion features. So the Red Raven actually has a better slow motion package in that camera. So it depends what you wanna do, but there is slow motion in this camera. And I'm gonna read off the data rates right now. So you can get 40 frames a second at 6K at 17 by nine. You can get 50 frames a second at 6K at two, four to one. Now you can get away with 40 frames a second. It's not super slow-mo, but if you just need to slow that image down, you can do it with that frame rate. I've done it and 50 frames, I've definitely recorded some B-roll at 50 frames and gotten what I need to. But I understand we want 60, we want 120. So you do get 48 frames at 5K, you get 60 frames at 4K. So that's good, you can at least get 60 frames at 4K. You are cropping in on that 6K sensor, but it's a beautiful image still at 4K, still cropping in. And then you get 120 frames at 2K. Now the best available red code settings. At this point, we've probably already been used to the DSMC2 compression ratio standard where you can go from three to one, to eight to one, to 10 to one, to 13 to one, 18 to one, etc. They've simplified it down to three options now with the Komodo. You have HQ, MQ and LQ. HQ, they say, is best used for VFX. Think of this as like a three to one ratio. Now, I can't compare these ratios directly, but this is like your high intensity VFX work you go with that HQ. Anything cinema or TV quality, Red says MQ is good to go. And for long interviews, web content, etc., you can use that LQ. You're still gonna get a beautiful image, but it's just gonna compress that image down for you to get more record time and more memory on your card. And I highly recommend this is from a personal experience standpoint, you just go with a 512 gig card, get two of those and you should be good to go and off to the races. Now, I think if you get those 120 cards, 128, I forget what they are, you're gonna back yourself into a corner really quick. This does eat cards up pretty quickly. It's not the end of the world, it's not terrible. You can get like 40 minutes in MQ and 6K raw but you don't wanna be in that position. You, you just get a 512 gig card, maybe a 240 or even better yet, another 512 and you'll be perfect. I did a short film over the weekend with two 512s, never ran into an issue. That 512 lasts me long enough so that the other card's dumping, you just keep cycling. I was good to go. So your raw acquisition formats, you have 6K at 17 by nine. As I said earlier, 6K at 16 by nine and 6K at two four to one. Then you have 5K at 17 by nine, 4K at 17 by nine, and 2K at 17 by nine. So you do have a limited amount of options here comparatively to the DSMC2 line. Now don't fret, you still have Apple ProRes. Now my personal opinion is if you are shooting red, you should be shooting raw. That's what this camera is all about. Shoot raw, 
always shoot raw, export in 1080 or 4K if need be, but shoot raw, R3D, it's the way to go. But let's say the project doesn't call for that and let's say this is your only camera or your primary camera and now that you've gone red and delivered work on red, you don't wanna compromise your image with another system that you've been using so you wanna stick with red and the project's just like a quick little interview for a small documentary for the web, et cetera, and you need that runtime, ProRes options are there. The good thing is that you can do 4K ProRes in camera and ProRes HQ, mind you, and you're able to record the 6K sensor. So that means you're recording the full sensor in 6K. It's downscaling it to 4K in camera and outputting it that way. So therefore you're not actually cropping in on the image. You're getting the full 6K image just in a 4K wrapper, which is the way to go. So that means you could do 4K ProRes HQ or just regular ProRes at 60 frames a second using the full 6K sensor. Now that's a plus. You can also do 2K ProRes at 120 frames a second. So you have your options there without cropping in on that sensor, but you do lose raw capability and you don't wanna lose raw capability because that's where the magic happens. The construction of this camera, now you may see images of it and it's so tiny and dainty and especially the white models, it may give off this plastic look, but don't be fooled. It still has that aluminum alloy build. It feels quality and despite it being light, it does not feel cheap in any way, shape or form. So what's the weight of this camera? Red breaks it down on their website where if you take the card out and you take the body cap off, which is fine, it's gonna be around 2.1 pounds. Smaller than the round three to 3.5 pounds of the DSMC2 cameras. So put that into perspective though. It is much smaller than the DSMC2 cameras, but you're only losing about a pound, pound and a half in weight. So it still feels like a quality product but it is lighter and that's gonna save your hand, your back and everything else. When you build this camera up, it feels lighter and you do notice that weight. So what are the battery types we got for this? This is two BP9 series battery slots, Canon. They're the only approved ones so far. A lot of people are like, third party, should we do it, should we not? It powers the camera, but it does say that it's not approved and using it at your own discretion. I'll just say that. I have Canon 955s, there's Canon 975s. I get plenty of runtime on my 955s. The camera does charge the 955s if plugged into wall power and you're not really using the camera. It does take a really long time to charge that way, like a really long time. As, as long as it would take to charge like a gold mount or V mount, it feels like. So I would recommend picking up a bunch of BPs in that regard or just buying a V-mount adaptable system, whether that be through Wooden Camera or Core Spectronics. I think those are the only two approved, right? Wooden Camera and Core. I know Tilta has one, but it's not actually approved. So I would recommend going V-mount. If you're going V-mount or Gold Mount, you're running all day on this camera. You get like three of those batteries. I, I don't see how you could ever back yourself into a corner there. But if you need the lightweight, you have the BP options there. I've run whole shoots with the BP, so don't think you're gonna be getting 20 minutes here. You'll still get a few hours of runtime off the two BPs, so you'll be set. You really will be. But the V-mounts will just even push you longer. I mean, I did a short film, and I think I used two gold mounts and one BP. And the BP, I like didn't even dent it. So camera runs great. It's just a mind-blowing how much better we get with battery life on a red. I'm used to swapping them V-mounts out like every 20 to 30 minutes. Audio, now red isn't known for audio. It does have an internal mic so you can get some scratch audio for reference if need be. I would not recommend using the internal camera to go record your YouTube videos, but if you're in a pinch, you could probably get away with it maybe, most likely not, but maybe. More than likely, this is just used so you can more easily line up your audio second system to the internal in post with a cinch just by looking at levels or what have you. And for reference of like, well, preamps and like, how's it gonna sound if you just plug systems into like, right now this video is being recorded on the Komodo 6K Stormtrooper. It is not on the latest firmware, which I should update soon. And I am running a Sennheiser G4 LAV directly into the camera, no second system in that regard. So we're right in. So you tell me how the audio sounds because that's the audio being recorded straight into the camera, baked into the file, and going straight into this non-linear editing system, which in this case is Premiere, and getting to your ears. So what you're hearing on YouTube, minus compression, 
is the audio from the lavs to the camera. Now, a really cool feature is the Wi-Fi capabilities of this camera. Now, I wouldn't recommend going and pulling focus all day on your iPad or anything, but you can Wi-Fi stream this camera to get full camera control on your tablet or mobile device. I used this recently on a film I shot where the camera is in a place that we couldn't really get good access to the screen. I got some reference on my phone using the Red Control app. I was able to adjust on my settings. The latency was super low. The quality, not the greatest. It only goes in 1080, so you're not getting like a 4K image stream near your iPad or anything but you're able to see a good reference and get the framing of the shot. You already know what the image looks like and the quality is gonna be good, so you have the confidence there and now you're just kind of using it as reference to what the image looks like. It's great to have that feature on there. It's great if your camera's rigged up on a car, you can monitor it easily, not hovering over an AC shoulder or living at Video Village and do everybody a good benefit. So it's a great director's monitor or a great way to control the camera on the fly when you're not there very easily. It's a huge feature. You can go on Red's YouTube page where they have Red Direct videos going in super detail about all this stuff or at least a little more detail than I'm going on. Now you can also just go to red.com and get all the information I'm giving to you today, but I know some people don't like to do that. That extra click, that's a lot of work. Why not just do the dishes and listen to me tell you everything? That's way easier, right? That's why I do these videos. Because there's always a comment that goes, wow, he's just saying all the info that's already on red.com. It's like, well, yeah, everyone's just saying the info that's already somewhere, usually. That's like somebody commenting on politics and the news being regurgitated because they're like, well, they're just saying the things that happen in the national debate. If they just watched the debate, you would have got all that info. I didn't mean to bring politics into this, but you get my point. So enjoy the video and like it. Like, 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 subscribe and share it. So you got your monitor outputs, you got integrated 12G SDI with 6G SDI, you got 3G SDI, my phone just restarted, which I was using as reference, but we're basically down at the bottom of this anyway. So let's get into this. What do I like about this camera? Everything. What don't I like about it? The little touch monitor, honestly. Now this is kind of me griping, because at least I have an integrated monitor, and I have done some shoots just personal shoots, not any paid for shoots, where I just ran off that monitor as reference and kind of just trust the exposure monitoring, false color, and the focus peaking, which you can kind of see, and just kind of going off that. But the monitor's so small that like your fingers can bump or struggle to hit the right button. And I'm running off a small HD seven inch. Now I know small HD have newer monitors out there, touch monitors that you can get Komodo packages for so you can operate and control the camera, but I don't have that. I just have the seven inch 702 Bright, which I love, and I have zero control of the camera, and there's many times where I'm like, oh, I missed the DSMC2 4.7 inch, or the seven inch touch monitors that just gave me full camera control. I kind of wish Red developed the monitor, to be honest. I love the small HD and I'm, I'm happy with it. I guess I should just buy a new small HD monitor that has touch control. I know I just talked about, well, your phone, it's like, sure, you're right. But just having things all in one package is always better, right? Maybe I buy a mount for my phone, mount it to the side or something like the old Red Sidekick. I don't know, I'll figure it out. It's working fine, I'm nitpicking here. That's what I'm nitpicking about. I wish I had more ways to touch and control the camera easier. Everything, everything else is great. It's better in low light than my previous DSMC2. We have a low light video on newwaymedia.com. Head on over to New Way Media's YouTube channel to check that video out. So what's New Way Media? I'm glad you asked. New Way Media is a full video service production company that I run with my co-partner, Brendan Grant. Now you may have seen some of Brendan Grant's red videos. He's a Scarlet W owner recently. Kicked it to the curb. Now he went full Panasonic. Forget him, kidding. So I have another channel called New Way Media where we're putting out more technical videos of testing cameras and also original work. So if you wanna go learn about some lighting techniques, if you wanna go learn about some low light techniques, if you just wanna learn, go over to New Way Media's YouTube page right here. I'm putting it right here, New Way Media. You can go check out some more videos there. Here, we're gonna be a little more personal. I'm gonna ramble. The videos will probably be in a longer format 
but it's gonna be the same stuff that you always got in here. Maybe you'll get some original content from me. Maybe you'll get a vlog. You never know, but mostly we're talking reds. If you hop over to New Way, we're going a little bit more on the cinema level. We'll teach you some editing stuff. We'll teach you some lighting stuff. We'll show you bigger projects we're working on, commercial pieces, etc. So they both have their purpose in place. So check it out. New Way Media, get on over there. Brendan Grant, me, Chris Murray, at C. Murray, what are we doing? But don't leave yet, we're not done. Okay, we're done. Thanks so much for watching everybody. This video, I hope, gave you some insight and knowledge of this new camera, gave you a little bit nitty gritty on the specs. It probably ran a little bit long, but that's just the Chris Mary way, ain't it? Follow me on my social media. Here's some Insta right there and keep up with everything going on in between the videos. And also check out newwaymedia.com right up here. There we go. You keep watching them, I'll keep making them. Later.